almost, why am I saying almost? They have smashed their own laws. They are not operating under any law anymore. And I thought they were, they're not. They are so far off the, off the road, it, it, it's scary. So let us, let us finish these pieces because it puts us in an enormously powerful position when we do finally get to the cases where we will be in front of Supreme Courts and others absolutely mm-hmm. nailing their system. Totally. Great. Yeah. Okay? Um, yeah, I look forward to that. Uh, there's, um, there's one other point there. I know that the papers for public, uh, for, per, uh, for, for personal matter, personal notices, business notices, I think most of them have one day a week that you can uh, record them or something. I, I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, I, I was told that there's maybe one day a week that they take the, the, they do those specific things in the paper. And sometimes yeah, it's a, it's better. It's, it's, it does depend, but yes, you'll find, for example, that um, that uh, they'll do bankruptcies on uh, Mondays and they'll do probates on Fridays. I mean, they, there is in some places that kind of pattern, but I don't think there is a golden rule across all gazettes and all uh, states. Yeah? Okay. All right. Good on you. Uh, answers my question here. Thank you. Okay. Um, so moving on to the next questions in the chat. And look, thank you so much for all those that call up. Um, as you hear, there is another caller waiting, and I'll get to that next caller in, in a quick moment. If I can, I just want to see if I can quickly answer some of these questions in the chat that come up. The question is from uh, guest uh, 44. When completing the certificate of survey and title, do you have to get a current physical survey, or can a previous survey be used? Um, the survey that they're using uh, is using uh, measurements and precision now uh, to establish what is described as the uh, as a survey. But the important thing is the survey before that was a description of uh, the geography, and it was done uh, in a in a manner that didn't require uh, to the millimeter. And you'll find that in most of the statutes, there is no requirement to get down to the single millimeter and the engineering type um, uh, scientific. In fact, the scientific is used, I think, to bluff people. I mean, a survey of your property is being able to go out there and describe the boundaries in words that define significant landmarks that separate your land from others. Uh, and using of things like 100 feet uh, from you know, the back wall to you know, northeast to X, Y, Z, you'll find that even with all the scientific razzmatazz, that is still the wording that's used with the technical survey. Now, the technical data is merely proof that's all it is, but it is not the element of what a survey is. A survey is the description in words of a definitive uh, travelling of the boundary of the estate of the property. That's what it is. So I hope I answered that okay. Let me get to the next call and then we'll keep going through the questions. And thank you again for all the questions people are asking. We'll get through them all. Uh, see if we can speak to Dean. Hello, Dean. Can you hear us? Hi, Dean. Can you hear us? You might be muted. Can you hear us, Dean? Hello, Dean. Uh, can't hear you, Dean, so I'm going to just mute you again and uh, jump back in the queue because I can't hear you. Sorry. Okay. I'll just mute Dean, and I see Ron's back on, so we'll speak to Ron. Ron, can you hear us? Yes, I can, Frank. Um, I just wanted to <clears throat> kind of tell the folks what happened today. Uh, there's a lady in Montana, you know her, and I coached her on how to do the um, notice of appointment of general executor and how to get it uh, filed at the county. Yep. And <clears throat> once, once uh, she said the magic words, which was, I want this filed in the public record, and I want it filed in the miscellaneous 
the lady was happy to do it, and she got it filed, and it's a done deal. Right. All we had to do was make sure that the margin requirements met their requirements. Now, every every state is different. It, it's crazy, yeah. but in Washington, it's three inches at the top, one, one, and one. In Montana, it's three, one half, one half, and then one at the bottom. So you can't go outside those margin limits. Um, because she doesn't have anybody that would count her, uh, be witnesses for her, what we did was I made a a signature place, and she signed through her thumbprint, and then that was, of course, not- uh, done in front of a notary, a uh, Montana State notary. And yep. that, I, I can't think of anything else that uh, we needed to do on that, you know. Right. So well, I, I um I think notices if we do it properly, not going to be a problem if we say it's for the public record and put it in miscellaneous. Yes. Yep. Well, I think I think there is already evidence throughout uh, different places now that the approach that folks are taking, being respectful, being competent and being knowledgeable of how the system is functioning is producing dividends. I mean, you found that firsthand. Uh, Things haven't completed for you yet, but you've already seen enough evidence in your own matters that their approach to you has dramatically changed. And I think it's going to dramatically change um, Monday too. Yes. Yep. Well, I hope this message gets out because unfortunately... As we saw tonight, there are still people who view this all as some great kind of game or some way of uh, sprouting uh, their wares or telling people that you don't need to be competent, you can remain ignorant. And we can see that 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 kind of crazy thinking is still pervading out there. So I just hope the message gets out that if people are competent and take the time and really research that it is possible to find remedy. It is truly possible, isn't it? Yes, it is. All we have to do is know the system. And it's a big system. <laughs> it is a big system, but know yourself. I think this is the missing thing. You've got to know who you are, don't you? Yep. You've got to know who you are, and you've got to know what it means to be into the Office of General Executor. That's not an easy role, is it? Oh, no. Not at no. all. Well, Ron, thank you. And I see Dean's back up, so I'm going to hang up now and see if we can get to speak to Dean. Ron, thanks very okay. much. Thanks. Bye. Okay. Bye. I see uh, Dean's back up. We're going to see if we can unmute Dean and see if we can speak to him now. Okay. Dean, can you hear us? Hey, hello. Hi. Can you? Oh, hi, Frank. Hi. Hey, sorry, I think I had my phone on mute. I'm on a cell phone. That's all right. Uh, all right. And uh, the previous caller before Ron, you were talking about the written description of a uh, of the land. Yes. And, uh, <clears throat> I just happen to have a copy of my own uh, survey, and it's really simple. It's a worded document that basically says, "I'll just read a quick paragraph if that's okay." It says all that tract or parcel of land situated in the town of Carroll, County of Chicago, and the state of New York known as being part of lot number 34, according to the Holland Land Company map of survey, goes on, and it says, beginning on a post on the north line of land, hereto owned by Joseph Hack, 15 chains, 45 links east and west of a line of said lot running then south, 17 west, blah, 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 and it goes on, chain length, and it's exactly as you said before. Yeah, it's just right written description of the land using known markings in your area. You yep. use references either to other parcels or to a marker or the corner or where you start and you just basically describe all the boundaries of your property and what they what's on that boundary. Yep. And uh, it's pretty simple to get. You can probably obtain one from any clerk's office for any particular parcel of land. Um, it's, it's, it's funny. You know, I, your, um, I, mm-hmm. it's, I was saying it's 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 funny in the sense that 
that I think the the whole thing of having uh, physical surveyors come out and do their their, their measurements is, is really a way of obstructing as opposed to adding. I don't think it adds anything to the ancient process. I think it's a way of uh, of effectively controlling it even further. Um, so, yeah, I, I, you know, people get that question and say, oh, to pay for a survey to come out, and they're not cheap. But if you look at what gets submitted at the end, even on the surveyed mappings that they do, the wording that you describe gets plonked on, and that's a survey, the words of the survey. Yeah? It, right. Yeah. Sure. And then even uh, just uh, having you know, purchased property recently, when they do the, uh, the, t- the, the search, the title search on the property, yep. in New York, you know, when, you know, at the closing, the attorney was, here, let me show you these ancient records that trace back the original land grant from the king, right? And you, then he'll say, but we actually only go back 80 years. That's right. Okay, so, you know, it's sort of like a smoke and mirror show where they're giving you the illusion that we're tracing this title back to the original land grant from, you know, King William, okay? And no, that's not what they're doing. They're just going back about 80 years and clearing it that way. And that's what is it here. Yeah, they call it Torrens title. And it's a, a principle from a guy... Believe it or not, he was a he was an Aussie. I don't think he was on the on the good side. He was on the dark side. Right. <laughs> but he was uh, he was a he was a premier of of a state here in Australia, and he came up with the arguments to say that pretty much they can draw a line in the sand and start the start the ball rolling, and that the register is more important than the document. And so uh, they call it Torrance yeah. title. Yeah. Exactly. Um, their their written instrument is more important than their actual search. What they tell you from their 80-year search takes precedence over the actual historical land record. Because if you go back and trace, like, for example, just what happened in New York in 1938, they changed their constitution, the state constitution. They removed the ability of people to have to own land and be allodial. I know you had yep. spoken about that before, but... <clears throat> A lodial deed, I mean, maybe it's not a perfected title. It's still a lot better than the, the way that we, I was recently transferred a title, which was tenants in common, Yep. you know? So, uh, okay, but that's, I, that, that actually wasn't my question, but, you know, thanks for adding and, and um, helping me clarify that point. My, my, my question more or less was, if I can just get a, <clears throat> not a specific understanding, but a general overview of how um, the trust number that we have established with Eucadia it works in relation to the estate. So the, yep. If I understand correctly, the estate is the, um, more or less the primary trust, and within the estate can exist multiple trusts. So where is that trust number in terms of the estate? Is it the primary, or is it just one of the trusts within the estate? Good, great question. The way the Roman system has kept everyone in line for, for so long is there is no escape. And the reason there is no escape is that there's been nothing comparable to the Roman system until Eucadia. Everything has been, by default argument, acquiescence, presumption, a subsidiary. The question is whether it is a subsidiary that is... Uh, in rebellion or it was a subsidiary that is recognized and compliant to the Roman system. Your trust number that is created by Eucadia, the number itself, well, the, the, the trust itself is administered by Eucadia and it is wholly outside of the clutches of the Roman system, the Rothschilds or any of the parasites. Totally separate. They could never get their mitts on it. And because it is connected into a divine pact between you and the divine, it means that this is your master trust to which all property ultimately can be administered and conveyed. Now what this allows us to do is it allows us to identify 
and what we're doing at the moment is identifying ourselves in their system 